So this here is the Saddler 925-2520. Came this little plastic sleeve. It's full metal construction. And the first time I opened the package that this pen was in, I was sitting in front of the TV and, and I became completely absorbed in this pencil. I completely forgot what was happening on the TV and this pencil filled up every space in my consciousness. The first thing which got me really excited and man it still gets me excited when I hold it is this grip. The grip is incredible. It is the grippiest grip I have ever gripped and that's because the knurling on this pencil it's absolutely astounding. It reminds me a bit of a fine-toothed file of some kind. In fact, the knurling on this thing is so fine, I think I might be able to use it as a nail file. Let's try it out. Yep. Definitely works as a nail file as well. Let me just wipe all the nail dust off my pencil now. What am I? It's also quite a hefty pencil. And this one in particular is the 2mm pencil lead size. And it has a full kind of mechanical pencil action to it. Once mechanical pencils get to holding pencil leads of this size, everyone likes to call them a lead holder. So I'll just stick to the convention and I'll keep on calling it a lead holder from now on. Now if you untwist the grip and the tip a bit, you can adjust the lead hardness indicator by turning the pencil. So it has 4B, 2B, B, HB, H, 2H, 4H and that's all. So currently I believe it comes with HB lead included. It comes with a sturdy pocket clip which can be removed with some effort. If that what if that's what you want. Get off. Ow, ow, ow. Eh. See, it can be removed. Eh. Oh dear. Eh. Ugh. And the cap comes off with quite a bit of force there. See, on the inside, seems to be mostly made out of brass or copper. It didn't seem to make many new scratches. So my initial impressions is that this is basically a perfect 2mm lead holder. But now it looks like I have to make just a few criticisms. They are tiny little criticisms that the average person wouldn't bother to notice about a pencil. But I'm going to bother to notice it because, you know, it did cost me 20 Australian dollars. So even though the grip on the lead holder is basically perfect, I don't actually think for a 2mm lead holder it's actually big enough. I wish it was more the size of the Graph Gear 1000. I mean, this Amanda Grip is an acceptable size for maybe a 0.5mm pencil. But when you have a 2mm lead holder, you tend to hold it on the side a lot like this. Because it's a thick piece of lead and you can get, you know, wider shading with it. So it would be nice if, you know, the grip was, you know, more up here as well. I guess you could hold it like this, like some kind of demented crab if you really wanted to. But this seems to be more comfortable. But still, it's an ample amount of grip. There's so much grip here on this finger that it almost doesn't matter. And the other tiny little criticism I have with it is that if you shake it really violently, it has a slight rattle to it. But you've got to shake it a lot. 
And this isn't a criticism, but more of a personal preference. It's just the sound that it makes when you press the, uh, the button down. Sounds like a rattly loose spring. But you might like that sound. It sounds very metallic and mechanical. In fact, the more I press it, the more I like it. So it's a fantastic lead holder, but it is quite expensive for a lead holder. Well, it's not actually expensive compared to like a rotaring, for example. It's actually quite affordable. But if you compare it to a cheap, nasty plastic thing like this, which costs 20 times less, it's starting to look a bit pricey. This is basically the cheapest lead holder that money can buy that you could still be bothered drawing with, I believe. It has that same mechanical pencil action. It's got a little lead hardness indicator on it. It has virtually no grip on it whatsoever. It's basically, in fact, the grip is actually better on the non-grip part of the pen than it is on the grip part of the pen. 100% plastic construction. And it comes with a feature that the Stadler does not come with. It comes with a lead sharpener. So you can put your lid in there and to give it a twist and it will sharpen your lid. I also purchased the Stadler Mars Carbon 2B pencil leads for this very pencil. It comes with a little doodad of some description, thingamabob. And, you know, it's quite embarrassing to say, but it did take me a little while to figure out how to open up this pencil lid case. And there's a little down arrow here that you can see. And eventually, I just got frustrated and I applied enough force on this down arrow. And, oh, it opens up like this. It's like a little roll, rolling sliding door. find it very cool and it pops back in place I could play with this all day I find it interesting that the leads have got little ribs on them I wonder why that is let's hold the button down and pull it out no, there's actually HB lead written on the lead itself. So it does come with HB lead. And this one has got 2B lead written on the lead. 2B. 2B or not 2B. That is the question. So then I suppose I'd better do some drawing with it to really discover how good or how terrible this lead holder is. So the first thing I noticed when I was drawing with the lead holder was the uh, 2B lead was just not as dark as I was expecting. I think I'm quite used to other brands of 2B leads or cheap brands of pencils that claim they have 2B leads in them but they're probably more darker. They're probably more like a 4B lead or something like that. So here you can see I've compared the Stadler 2B lead with a Pentel HB lead and also a Pentel 2B lead. And you can see that the 2B lead is significantly darker than the 2B lead of the Stadler. It's like a 4B lead or something. So that did catch me off guard because I was expecting to get high levels of contrast out of this lead. But I suppose on the upside I can get some lighter shades out of it though. So you can see here I've been doing a page of scribbling and now it's time to draw more a complete piece. Another thing about this 2B lead is that it's incredibly smooth. In fact the other pencil leads I have 
which are of more of a cheap variety. I never realized how rough and like gritty they are. But you only really notice if something is rough and gritty, like even something you think is smooth, if you get something which is actually smooth. Did I? Did that make any sense to you? I, I hope so. Now, I'm drawing in a rather thick sketchbook, which I have dedicated to pencil work. And it's just an incredibly thick sketchbook. In fact, never again will I think I buy a sketchbook which is this thick. It's like about 2.2 centimeters thick. So I can't really comfortably rest my arm on the table and then sketch in it because it, you know, pushes my arm skyward. When I first saw this sketchbook, I think I bought it a few years ago now and I tend to hoard my sketchbooks. I once had like a pile of blank sketchbooks that were like a foot high or something waiting to be used. Anyway, I believed that it would be good value to buy a thick one, but it turns out to be slightly uncomfortable and hard to get used to especially when you're drawing on like a table or something. So anyway, I'll go back to talking about the pencil, or as I should probably call it, the lead holder. Now I was comparing this more mechanical pencil style, or I think it's called a clutch knock system, where you press the end of the lead holder and the lead comes out, versus a regular clutch pencil. And I believe with the clutch knock system on the Stadler, you won't be able to use the entirety of the lead because you know with uh, mechanical pencils the clutch mechanism is recessed a fair distance away from the lead sleeve inside the pencil so you usually can't use a length of graphite which is about the length of the lead sleeve but it may only be about a centimeter or so of lead so really it's probably nothing to worry about but it's a nice looking lead holder Nice to, you know, take out in public, if we ever get to go out in public again. Oh yes, and you know how the lid holder has a slight rattle to it if you shake it violently? Well, I found a solution for that. So you just take the cap off the end of the lid holder, and then you wrap a little bit of clear tape on the bottom section of the cap. This will stop that metal-to-metal -metal contact, which is causing you all that rattling sound, you know? Oh. And I have another little hint. When you're drawing with pencil and you don't want to smudge your artwork, I've discovered if you cut out a small square from some plastic packaging, the plastic is quite smooth and slippery and the graphite just won't stick to it or rub on the paper. So I usually put that between my hand and the paper to stop any smudging. It works really well. I can rub this slippery piece of plastic around on the paper as much as I like with my hand on top of it and I don't get graphite on my hand and it doesn't smudge my artwork. I used to use a piece of paper to do this quite a while ago but I found that well it's still smudged. It didn't get graphite on my hand though but it just smudged all over the place. This piece of plastic is fantastic. Fantastic plastic. Now getting back to that wonderful pencil I'm drawing with. The one thing which kind of annoys me is the lack of a lead sharpener. I mean, it was quite an expensive pencil, lead holder, and it comes with no way to sharpen the lead. So I looked up how much a Stadler lead sharpener would cost, and I discovered that they cost about 18 Australian dollars. As far as I can see, that's clearly why they didn't include one, so they could charge you another arm and a leg for one, just so you can have the privilege of having some sharp lead. But, little to Stedler's knowledge, they do include a lead sharpener. Yes, if you take the cap off the end of the lead holder, I find that that small little cylinder is just sharp enough to scrape some graphite off. And as you're scraping it off, all the graphite usually ends up inside of the cylinder anyway, inside of the lead holder cap. And then I can sprinkle it on my piece of paper and use it as some graphite powder. Although, to be honest, it's not a very good lead sharpener. It does work, if you're patient enough, that is. But I think I will have to get a good quality lead sharpener. Or maybe I could try and make one sometime. Okay, I'll try and make a video about making a lead sharpener. I think I have some ideas. I would probably just need, like, a good quality pencil sharpener, and then maybe a hollowed out pencil that the lead can slide through into the pencil sharpener or something. Yeah, you know, something like that. 
You know when something is like really, really close to perfection and you like just start getting overly critical of it? Like if you own some old bomb of a car, you know, you wouldn't start complaining that it didn't have a, like a cup holder or something where you wanted it. You just say, oh, well, the car's not very good. Well, what do you expect? It still works. That's all I ask for. But you know, when you buy something really nice, you expect the world of it. And well, maybe just buying anything expensive is just setting yourself up for disappointment. Because at the end of the day, I'm drawing with this. And it's, you know, it's rather nice. But it's, it's a pencil. Yep, it holds a lead, as advertised. Nothing remarkable about that. It's not turning me into a better human being. It's not changing my life. In fact, I could draw this and do, you know, still a very good job, probably identical, with that cheap $1 lead holder I showed you earlier. Why do I keep on spending money on these art supplies? I just do not know. In fact, if I use that $1 lead holder that I showed you earlier, I would get a much higher level of contrast in the artwork because it's so-called to be lead is actually quite a bit darker than the Stadler's. But you also get the lighter shading of the lighter lead. And the leads that I bought for this Stadler lead holder, which were also of a Stadler brand, you know, they were quite expensive as well. I think they cost just as much as the lead holder itself. So like almost, I think it was $19 for 12 leads. So, you know, that's a, a reasonably pricey box of pencils, that is. And to make matters worse, if you actually measure the length of the leads, they're like almost half the size of a regular pencil. So you might be thinking, well, you know, that doesn't sound like very good value, really. But, um, you know, I beg to differ. I don't think it's bad value at all, actually. Basically because of how much of the lead you can use. When you're sharpening a pencil down to a fine point, you throw away a lot of lead. And you also throw away a lot of tree as well. Those poor trees. What do they ever do to you? Huh? You tell people to chop them down with your money just so you can put them in a pencil sharpener and turn them into little ribbons. Huh? Did you find that entertaining? Is that how you get your kicks, is it? So sorry about that. Um, uh, where, where was I? Oh, yes, yes. So with when you buy lead for a lead holder, you can basically use the entirety of the lead that you've purchased. Even when you sharpen the lead, it's really easy to use that sharpened lead and the powder that came off it, you know, as a bit of powdered graphite. So you can use almost 100% of that lead you bought. And I'll throw up a picture here of how much lead I actually used for this entire artwork, including the scribbly piece of paper I did on the previous page, which I also showed you. Hardly any lead at all. I could probably fill books and books of drawings with, you know, that box of leads I bought. Just 12 leads. I mean, so, you know, it's not bad value. Plus, it also feels like a good quality lead. So it's a win-win. Just the initial purchase hurts a bit, that's all. I think I might just make one last comment about the lead holder. And that's just about the grip again, really. The grip is fantastic because the knurling is fantastic. But I do wish it was just a bit longer and also just a bit wider. If I compare it to the width of the Pentel GraphKey 1000, it's a bit narrower. I mean, it does have better knurling on it than the Pentel GraphKey, but it is narrower. So, you know, just be a bit more comfortable for me if it was a bit thicker as well. So that's all really. I enjoy drawing this. I enjoyed imagining what some kind of theropod would do to uh, design some kind of interplanetary spaceship. Maybe to escape some kind of cataclysmic event that's about to tear apart its entire world. Looking back on your own kind, who's about to be vaporized into atoms, with the knowledge that you can only really save yourself. It's a cheery story. Anyway, um, I really have nothing more to say. I can't think of anything. Might just say goodbye. Goodbye.